Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, this has been quite some time that I have not uh, able to join in the, the Facebook Live. As many of you know, last couple of months has been a little bit uh, difficult with uh, His Holiness passing away and um, and a lot of traveling. So, but I'm happy, happy to be back here this morning. Um, so, before we start this morning, I wanted to maybe have uh, just a few minutes of. Uh, uh, rest into the stillness and silence and spaciousness so everybody i'm going to play uh, everybody knows now the salve mant uh, mantra and the prayer so i wanted to just remain a little bit of silence before we begin this morning just so please sit comfortably and uh, bring your attention inward Okay, <clears throat> so welcome back. So today's um, conversation, um, I thought I will speak a little bit about, uh, the title is All is Good. Every, every moment, no matter how painful, and, uh, but we can always learn from every given moment. So this is the title, and I just wanted to say maybe a few words about when I talk about these very, very simple matters, very, very common sense, everybody knows, everybody's aware of. 
And but I think sometimes we all need to remind each other it is a simple. It is that we something we already know, but we need to remember we know. We need to, to live what we know through the, those knowledges. That is something I feel like uh, we are kind of reminding each other. It's not something that I've, uh, as I always said, that I have nothing more or different to offer or teach. I'll be teaching the same thing again and again, reminding each other, helping each other. So that this is what what we are going to do today too. In a context that uh, all is good, it, this is concept, this, this notion of all is good, it is clearly coming from tradition of Dzogchen. Uh, Dzogchen is a part of great perfection, and Dzogchen is part of all goodness, and that is why Dzogchen, the, the knowledge of the Dzog, great perfection, uh, the knowledge, this teaching is coming from directly from Samantabhadra, the primordial Buddha, Kuntu Zangpo. And the, the fact, the, the name Kuntu Zangpo, it is exactly like that. So it's a Kuntu means all, Zangpo means good. So, so basically, the all, all is good. And uh, many of the uh, Dzogchen teaching, uh, different cycles of Dzogchen teaching, different chapters in the Dzogchen teaching. Within each of these chapters, sometimes they always say, I pay homage to Kundu Zangpo uh, of some kind, a, a pervasive Kundu Zangpo, a boundless Kundu Zangpo, or depthless Kundu Zangpo, or birth and fearless Kundu Sangpo, or birth and deathless Kundu Sangpo, some sense of uh, it is always about this all goodness, the basic goodness that who we are, basically. This is about that. Uh, Sometimes this might be turned into a very esoteric form, uh, teachings that somehow nobody understands. Uh, or sometimes it, it can be, these teachings can be turned turn into a very very conceptual, very dry, uh, basically has nothing to do with you and me and probably anybody, but people get so much engaged in, in these uh, very complicated theoretical and conceptual. It's, it's, it's not like that either. So what is Dzogchen is this, this sense of uh, all is good. So, and all is good, um, we are basically, as a human being, the basic goodness is in every single of us. So, so just for a moment, think about that. I want everybody to bring your little bit of attention uh, inward yourself, to feel that sense of goodness within yourself, that primordial Buddha, enlightened being, enlightened knowledge, enlightened wisdom, uh, the tr genuine being, it's within you. So when you l bring your attention inward, uh, trying to feel yourself and connect with yourself, feel that sense of a basic goodness. You are good. I am good. Just I want everybody to just for, for a moment bring your attention to that place in you. And as you bring that attention in you, if you do feel some sense, sense of judging anybody, other people, uh, judging this moment, uh, judging yourself, but simply recognize that you are kind of having a little difficult to simply connecting with that basic goodness of who you are. Just recognize that, but not criticize that. Okay? Just... Just do that for a moment. And uh, 
at the same time, uh, you might be thinking about that, okay, well, uh, these circumstances in my life, this moment, uh, not everybody is same, but some of you, maybe you are facing some challenges, some difficulties, then you think how it can, sorry, how this moment can be good. And um, sorry about that. Um, Okay, so well, I didn't know how to turn off this phone, but uh, if as long as I keep ringing, I will keep on turning off. So I think we'll find a solution that way. Um, so, so my, what I'm trying to say here is how, how that for some of you feel like how everything can be good this very moment, and uh, you don't, you don't, you do not feel like that in your, in yourself. Uh, in this moment, um, so do you all hear me? Okay, I don't see the. Okay, I think. I think we are good. So you all hear me okay? You, you see me okay? Wonderful. Thank you. Sorry for that. Um, so if you look at a certain situation that's in our life, uh, so some of you might feel like, okay, I, I don't feel very good in myself and in, in the situation that I'm living. And um, But what, what question that we need to answer ourselves is what you don't see uh, and what do you don't uh, feel, and what do you what you the possibility that you don't see? It has something to do with your own inner space. So when we we've in, internally in ourselves, when our space in our heart, in space in our life, when they are filled with pain, and you don't recognize them, when you're trying to live through those pain, then maybe it's harder harder to see things more clearly, um, see things, what is the good about the moment, what is the good basic goodness of ourself, it's difficult to see. Or when we feel our eyes are obscured with our inner pain of ego, identity, then we also begin to just basically, our eyes is obscure, we, we look at it around, we don't see particularly goodness in things and situations in our life because we are looking through the pain. We are filtering the, what we are perceiving through our pain. And, uh, and also the same thing, what we hear is at any given moment, even this very moment when you are hearing me, and uh, maybe you feel uh, you, you don't hear maybe what I'm trying to say or communicate. You're only really filtering that everything through your frustration and pain. So basically, the ex simple example and a metaphor is like a, we have, a, it's like a phone metaphor. We have a great smartphone. We have wonderful apps. But, and then in these, in these apps, what it's saying is usually, you know, it says, do you allow to access your camera? What do you have to say? You have to say, it's not saying you have to make a camera, you have to have a new camera. It's saying you already have a camera in your built-in camera, in your iPhone, or in yourself, that you have this boundless wisdom eyes in yourself. Do you allow to see through that? That's what the smartphone says, right? Do you allow, do you allow me to giving access to your phone? What do you have to do? You have to say, Yes, I allow that you access the camera. I allow myself to accessing my wisdom eyes so that I can see through my 
boundless wisdom I I will see a different world new world and a, a fresh world a world with infinite possibility a world with warmth and kindness a world with filled with opportunity and kind and nice people I wanted to see that but you have to allow access to the universe to your camera same thing like that in the smartphone there you have an app you have a microphone in your phone but unless you allow access to that it does not you cannot talk nobody will hear you when you talk that's what happens right when we are on the skype or on a zoom in the meetings we are trying to do we are trying to we see each other we are trying to say we don't hear you talk and we we are trying to say those things why because you don't hear other people you see them but you don't hear them or they see you they don't hear you what's the problem with that because you just simply have to give a access to your wisdom air wisdom air you have to say yes i allow i i'm i open myself i allow myself to the universe to the people to my families and friends people who need me i allow access to my microphone i allow to access to my camera i allow to access to my i don't know uh, dropbox or something like that so i'll allow that inner space so i think what i'm trying to say here is simply is a question of you allow to open yourself you allow to see through that wisdom you allow to hear that hear through that wisdom air and you trying to overcome your inner noises by staying more co closer to the inner silence you overcome through those inner chattering of your 84000 thoughts a day by just kind of recognizing how crazy how much thinking you do how meaningless thinking you do how draining these unproductive and how draining these thought thoughts are just simply having some recognition of that will already give change you and a given giving a access to this inner silence and inner stillness inner space through where you feel you are basically allowing yourself to the universe i think that i think that is something is very important now sometimes people ask about these questions then when i teach these things as okay what has to do with the teaching of dzogchen of course and i just got a question somebody saying you know things that i teach you're teaching uh, dzogchen very openly and uh, and in in uh, how you say in ancient time they are very kind of forbidden uh, and so what is that and how 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 the change happened so i was just thinking actually today a little bit reflecting on that so of course i it's not like i'm opening giving an initiation and something like that i hardly ever do initiation so anything like that or or so i'm just basically some of these the ancient in ancient teaching like a uh, this is a uh, one of the uh, texts on dzogchen called shangjun yiji this is one of the most important uh, uh dzogchen teaching in burn and in this every chapter kind of started with the praising the kundu zangbo kundu zangbo uh rangri mimbasela chansalo kundu zangbo who uh illuminates i say clears the darkness kundu sangmo sangbo which which pervades the goodness to everything and so on so what i'm trying to do is here simply some of those very core fundamental uh, message of wisdom is i'm trying to uh, uh, talk in a way that you understand not only i'm not doing for you i'm trying to think in a way that i understand and i'm trying to uh talk in a way that you understand and i try i'm trying to have a conversation among us our with our cyber sangha that we can all have some common ground common understanding in which maybe which with that understanding maybe if there is truly some understanding then there might be some effect in our life this is all what really i'm trying to do nothing fancy nothing nothing and so um so 
according to this ancient teaching, it talks about some things like Machupai uh, Sha. This is in Tibetan, it says, uh, leave it without changing it. Leave it as it is. This is a very simple concept. Leave it in its own place. So, for example, what is this very simple concept about leaving it as it is? Um, well, I mean, there's a few things. One thing I think, uh, I, where I look at a life when I'm talking about everything is good, all is good. If you look at your life this very moment, just for a moment, can you leave everything as it is? You are trying to control too much. You are trying to change too much. You are trying to maybe even worst case manipulate the situation and other people. You are trying to basically you are not aware of there is something good about every situation. The person who is challenging could be very much your friend and resource, support. If you are open to it, if you, if you guide the conversation in a more positive and more kind way, if you're trying to connect with that individual as a person, not with your goals, but as a person, see some basic goodness in that person, see some basic challenges that person is facing from your own some sense of basic goodness trying to trying to to relate with that may yeah maybe i hear some of you are saying wow you have no idea who i am dealing with yes it's possible maybe if the person you are dealing with if it's that difficult then whole point is not to deal That's again another way to look at it, leave it as it is. You have no power, no clarity and dealing with this situation or dealing with that person. So for a moment, don't deal with it. Don't deal with it. And, and somebody saying, I just need to pay a bill. Of course, you will pay, you will pay better bill. You will pay you probably see more resources, more opportunity, more possibility if you don't control too much. If you open yourself, you see more. If you remain a little silent, you hear more. So, so idea of this is this is a simple concept I'm trying to discuss here is this idea of leave it as it is in this ancient ancient wisdom traditions. Leave it as it is. So there are things you can leave it as it is and ask this question, what is the best I can learn from this war situation, from your perception, your opinion? what this situation is trying to teach me, how this situation is trying to make me grow, how this situation is trying to show me something. Maybe even, even the most difficult person that you're dealing with, maybe this person needs the help from you. Maybe you are the only one in that particular situation can help this person. So what is the good about the situation that you are in? The, I was recently, we had a spirituality and science conference at, in Serenity Ridge. And uh, one of the speakers spoke about somebody have, supposed to have done a research about a threat and challenge. Differences between threat and challenge and uh, a finding from neuroscience research. The differences between challenge and the threat is the challenge which you cannot overcome becomes your threat. But it's not saying challenges are bad. Challenges are good. It's not saying it's the same thing. Pain, is a pain bad? Pain is only bad if it's a threat for you. If you waste it, if you ignore it, 
If you don't see the opportunity to grow through your pain, then only it's a bad for you. But if you see it's not a threat, if you see challenge as there's a pain as a challenge which you can overcome, you you look for your strength, your clarity, your trust, your resources. You look for all your positive qualities, supports to overcome your pain. Then that case, your pain is not challenge. I say not a threat. It's challenge which you can, you, which you're going to overcome. In the process, you're going to grow. You're going to be, become strong. You, you're going to become kinder, nicer human being. So it's not just the pain is bad. Buddha discovered the self-realization through his pain. Many yogis, many enlightened masters, many people who are, uh, are in really in the mood of growing and developing, they don't look at pain as a bad. They look at pain as an opportunity. So I, I know like uh, some situation, some of you might be in this situation, pain is difficult, but please ask this question, what this situation is trying to teach you, how this situation is trying to help you, what you can make the best out of this situation, how you can grow through this situation, how you can even be kind to somebody through this situation, even they are challenging people. It's your opportunity. So this idea of leave it as it is, of course, some situation of course, some people might be thinking, wow, you know, um, that example doesn't seem to working. So um, what about if the, my child is burning in the house, how I can leave that situation? I have to do something. Of course you have to do something situation like that. But maybe your situation is not exactly like that, even you think it's like that. So, so I think in a given situation in life, there is, what is good about it? Ask, ask the right, positive, powerful, eye-opening questions about your pain, about your threat. Then it will help you. So that's, I think it's a one, one aspect that I wanted to say a little bit is because uh, uh, it's really like uh, this very simple concept about Majupasha, Rangsarsha, Rangdol Tong. Like, let it, let it liberate by itself. There are many situations in our life that they will disappear by themselves. That they will liberate by themselves. Without your, your pain involvement, without you controlling they will they will go away by themselves but what you need to do is only learn just learn to not always to control the situation what people do out of control they don't allow they don't grow themselves because how they can grow themselves when they're controlling themselves all the time they don't allow other people to grow because they're controlling other people. They don't allow the situations to clear and, clear and develop a better place in the society because they, every situation that they are part of it, they're always trying to control that situation. So they're basically not let, growing themselves, not allowing somebody to grow, or not, not allowing some situations to develop themselves. So their absence of their pain, activity of their pain body, absence of their activities of their pain speech, absence of their activities of their ideas, decisions of their pain mind, situation will be much, much better. That's why it says, leave it as it is. Let it liberate by itself. Let it take care of by itself. Even sometimes people, many times in, in the social work, when we are trying to help situation some people uh, they, 
the children trying to help parents, parents trying to help children or something like that. Very often this is what we do. We, we overly get engaged with the situation with our pain by trusting that everybody has a strength to grow by themselves. By giving space, by giving space for them to clear their mind, by giving a space for them to find their clarity, by giving their space to do certain, make a decision and take some actions, giving those space to each other is the greatest gift in any given moment you can do to yourself and to other people in this, these situations. And that basically translates back to the idea of leave it, at, leave it as it is. There is something good about that situation. All is good. Okay, so so let's uh, just uh, stay and uh, do a short meditation together. And uh, I want everybody to uh, just to reflect exactly the same thing what we are discussing here. Trying to uh, connect with this basic goodness in ourself. Our boundless space is a goodness is there in there our infinite possibility is the, our one of our goodness so bring your attention inward Just take a few deep breathings and uh, whatever uh, discomfort that you feel, just breathe it out. And just breathe in, just feel like refresh yourself, energize yourself, find a more clear, better place or recognize that place of stillness, silence, spaciousness. And beautiful thing is that we all are here in this magical cyberspace, just being together, connected to each other, supporting each other, I am feeling all of your support and I'm sending my support to all of you. I'm allowing the universe, all of you to access me, the metaphor of my camera, my microphone, my heart is open, my ear is open, mind is open, and we are connected through this openness to each other.
just be open, feel that openness toward yourself, toward life, toward universe, toward others, toward all the situations in your life. Just be open. I allow myself to be open to the world that I'm experiencing, to all these appearances, situations. Allow yourself to open. And particularly, allow yourself to open to the situation that you feel threat or challenged, or person that you feel threat or challenged by, or your own health your own emotions, your own thoughts. Be open. From that deep place of stillness, a boundless stillness, Awareness of silence, the eye of the spaciousness. Connect ask yourself this question what is this situation it's really trying to teach me? trying to help me, trying to show me something. Trying to improve my life. How I can <clears throat> grow through this situation, how I can benefit through this situation, how I can develop my spiritual practice through this situation, how I can be more kind, generous, more open with this situation. How I can my inner freedom through this situation. There's nothing wrong about this situation. I have to have right relationship to this situation. Just for a moment, contemplate on that. And important that we are all are supporting each other to do this. I am clearly here with my prayers supporting all of you.
to reflect what I'm guiding, praying that you have a great discovery through this reflection and meditation. Okay, so if you are close eye, you can open your eye. How do you feel? I think, uh, you know, one of the greatest thing about this internet is when we are sitting together in uh, among, when we are teach, it's kind of hard to take so many questions and so many people's uh, feedback, but here we are free from those conditions, boundaries, so I would love to hear your feedbacks. Be open to give a feedback. Do you see something good about every given moment? Do you see something good about this situation, challenging situation in your life. Do you see opportunity, opportunity to grow, be kind? Do you see it benefits, there is possibility that situation will benefit you for your development? Do you see there is a benefit for of leaving, letting it be a little bit? Leaving it, leaving it as it is, Machupasha, without changing, Rangsarasha, leaving it in its place, Rangdoltong, let it, let it liberate by itself. Can you overcome from that place of pain identity? Pain occupies space. Pain obscures eyes and ears so that you can feel more in that space. You can hear more from that silence. You can see more through your eyes. So you can see a Kundu something good, a good basic goodness, around and within and situation, even in threats. Do you recognize the plan you have? You, you, you have a, we wanted to say something very mean to somebody. You, do you recognize it doesn't help and you don't have to say and you can even say something better, positive, helpful, because you feel more open, because you see more through that kindness, because you see more, your kindness will affect somebody positively, then your plan to say something negatively will have negative impact in somebody's life. Do you see? So some of you are saying it is a difficult, it is a challenge. So of course, even the word, the voice in you, which is saying it is a difficult, it is a challenge, is it is impossible. Can you hear yourself saying it's impossible, it's a difficult, it's a challenging? For a moment, can you let go of those voices? Let them rest in the stillness. Let them dissolve in the silence. Let them dis dis disappear in that space.
Can you take a break from this word impossible? Let's think about it for a moment. The word impossible is something that probably we use in our life so many times. What those are the actual words, those are actual thoughts, feelings, what makes life impossible. Because you're constantly, you are making yourself difficult, making it a difficult situation. So when you hear that, that you are saying that, you are hearing that, what do you do? Don't blame. We can change. We change. I hear saying it is difficult. I hear saying it's impossible. I hear it. Hear from that space. Allow that voice, the energy that voice carries, the thought that voice carries, the emotions that voices carries, trying to be aware of all the different layers. Let it go and realize that's not true. It's possible. I can. I will. Exercise this process for some time. You will begin to feel shift and changes the way you see things in your life. So I hope, I hope, so I think we, uh, we are finished now. Um, so Thank you very much. I think it's uh, such a wonderful to see uh, more than 300 people um, showing up in a few hours of notice, not even having any uh, informing before. And um, um, because I, I just realized that since I'm traveling a lot last couple of months with all these ideas of Yes, I'm going to do every week. Yes, I'm going to do every week. That particular day, that particular time, it's been really, really difficult traveling and from India and trying to the the jet lag, the lack of internet connection, change of time zone, and change of many things in life. And it was kind of very difficult to, even though all our kundusangpo, all is good, but still trying to make it it was difficult so i uh, i will keep on this this con notion of pit instruction from the Dzogchen tradition which is what i i'm speaking today um and um but uh, i will take a little um freedom that whenever i can i will and i will try to inform that everybody a little bit earlier than, you know, today in a few hours. But uh, I think I will keep a little bit more, uh, give, my, give myself a little bit more space to do when I have the energy and the space and the internet to do rather than feeling like, um, you know, yeah. So you know what I'm saying. And so tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, um, 1 p.m. New York time, we have a great, great speakers with uh, three Tibetan doctors, one Geshe, and uh, they will all be, all, all of them will be speaking about uh, basically our well-being, basically another, another perspective of our well-being. One, they're going to speak about, because since the winter is coming close, uh, the winter care, how, how, what you should do according to the Tibetan medicine principles, what are the things you can do in the winter, preparing yourself for the winter, particularly the places winter is tough, and uh, and also uh, some general notion concept about uh, the the wind, 
the lung. You know that Tibetan medicine talks a lot about a uh, lot of knowledge about the wind and imbalance of wind and how that imbalance of wind affects our well-being or our mind uh, and also our body. So, so imbalances of uh, wind can affect the psychological imbalances. So, so how that will work, and um, and also uh, they clearly wanted to speak a little bit more on the tips that something that which will more. Um, less theoretical, um, but something that you can apply according to this healing methods of Tibetan medicine point of view, how, what are the behavior things you can do. And so anyway, so I'm very, very excited to host them tomorrow. Yesterday I had a meeting with them, so I just see all the, the Zoom and Facebook, everything's working, so it was working fine, so I'm looking forward. forward. So it's a one p.m. New York time tomorrow. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you all and please let everybody know in forms or something that uh, the Facebook, TWR Facebook Live team has been working so hard uh, trying to prepare all these things and bringing the speakers in. So, and uh, I also myself trying to, uh, even though traveling and teaching schedules, family and everything, but uh, cyber Sangha is very important this time in my life. Cyber Sangha is very important that which is uh, since you are a traveler um, that Cyber Sangha is very important. You are you are able to connect with everybody from your room, from your way, wherever you, which country, which time zone you are in. So all of you are very important. And uh, but I want all of you to help me and help us to also to spread the word around so that we want to spread the word around only who want to hear us. We do not want to spread the word around who do not care to hear hear me or hear what we have to say. So definitely, so if you know somebody who would benefit and who would love to hear, who has been hearing, who don't have the information, please make sure that you let every friends, every sang, Cyber Sangha members know that tomorrow 1 p.m. New York time, we will be uh, having a wonderful conversation here. So thank you very much.